YouTube, what's happening? It's Friday, August 9th. You can see we have a busy day today. It's Friday. There are 16 games. We got a doubleheader going on in Minnesota today. So we got a busy one we got to jump into. Like and subscribe yesterday. Yeah, two and three. It was a short day. Didn't bet much. Lost less than a unit. Ah, taxes, really, if you think about it. Still right around 60 units for the year. Hey, that's great. Football season is literally, what, two weeks for college and like three weeks for NFL. And I'm I'm trying not to put videos out for NFL preseason, but it's so hard. I because I watch the games, I I want to do it, but there's no data, there's no stats. You're literally just guessing. I don't know what to put the videos on. Just my thoughts. I mean, I don't know what to do all that part. So I'm I will I might figure something out for next week. But for right now, we're focusing strictly on baseball. Still, I know we love it around here. So uh, drop a like, subscribe. Let's go ahead and jump to that first game right now. All right, first up, we got Cleveland, Minnesota, part one of the doubleheader. This is that day-ish game because every other game is going to be a night game. This one, you have Minnesota 135 at home favorite. We have a total of eight. Looking at the weather reports, we can see that. It is going to be blowing out 12 miles an hour for the people that care about that. Uh, I think I care more about the wind blowing out than in. In just, I don't think it matters as much. But out, I think, but helps those fly balls a little bit more. So, I don't know. I kind of want to do more research on that. So, um, But you can see that there. Let's look at the stats. 50% nerfy based on what they've done this year. Noticeable, Cleveland's on a five-game losing streak. They're struggling a little bit. Four runs a game for 19th, 238 average for 22nd for Cleveland. The last three, Minnesota, 2.7 and a buck 79 both 28th in the last three they're struggling even more so both teams are struggling a good bit and strikeouts cleveland never strikes out much minnesota mid so look at the, let's look at the one pitcher i know because for some reason cleveland hasn't announced a pitcher even though the game's going to be in a few hours what so either way we have obert going out there we know he's a beast well, he's, he does pretty good. I mean, look at these numbers. These are good numbers. So you can see what he does. Uh, he hasn't faced Cleveland recently, but yeah, two strikes out a bunch. Let's pop over to the prop and look a little closer. History, you can see Jose's got some history, 385 with 13 at bats. He's with a home run and a 1.2. I'm going to go ahead and pop over to bats real quick. Out of order, I know, but look, Jose, 100%. HRR and he's face he's got a good matchup with Ober with a history of 385 yeah I'm putting Jose on my list right there Jay Ramirez over 1.5 HR gotta add that one I don't know the statue is there it's gotta do it so you can see who else we have uh Nailers had nine at bats not too bad uh free freeman's had a handful of bats so you got these guys and then you got some like he is terrible so 0 for 9 1 for 11 if against righties you can see what they've done this year as a team cleveland has against minnesota uh can i even look at the other side nope i can't even look at the other side okay thanks because nothing is out there yet so let me show some more bats real quick we can see i already got jose like i said this guy's 90 percent we just saw he is terrible. He has, what is he, one for 11? Is that what it was? Uh, history, yeah, one for 11. So if you're playing now, don't just look at 90%. You got to look at how they do and everything. So you can see that we got Naylor, we got Ramirez. How's Naylor done? Naylor, nine at bats. He's three for nine with an RBI with a 0.7. Ugh, not leave that one alone. So I'll just take Jose to get over one and 1.5 HRR. Come back here. I mean... Obert's good. We know he's good. We don't know who's pitching for Cleveland. The over-under is eight. I can't take a side because I don't know who's pitching for Cleveland. I don't want to take an over because look at these offenses. Look at these averages. They're terrible. They're both 22nd and 28th. Not good. I'm not taking an under um, because what if they put a bullpen dude that just gives us six runs? See, there's so many ups and downs. So uh, I'm just going to take that Ramirez over 1.5 HR and just move on to the next game. And clearly, I forgot to go over props. Coffee's kicked in a little too much today so far. We can look at this. We have outs. He's pretty consistent over 17 and a half. If you want to take that, by all means. I see Jose does good against him, but I mean, that's not a bad play, but it is heavily juiced. Ooh. Uh, strikeouts, five and a half. It's against Cleveland. We know Cleveland doesn't strike out much. I wouldn't do it. Hits. He's been pretty good recently. Earned runs and walks. So there are those. Almost forgot those. Now we can move on to the next game. All right, game two. Angels and Nationals. Pretty much a pick them. Slightly favorite Washington. Nine is the total. We see 60% nerfy based on what they've done this year. Offense is 6.3 and 6.7. That's seventh and sixth right now. They're both doing good getting runs in. 
296 and 286, that's fifth and seventh. They're both in the top seven in batting average. Who would have thought? If I told you, hey, pick seven teams that are doing great in offense, I guarantee you will not pick either of these teams. Sneaky teams they are, very sneaky. And you can see they're about mid on strikeouts. Let's look over at the weather report. And we have wind blowing out 10, and but it's going to be storming. So take that to effect. Uh, you can see 10 miles an hour. Let's pop over some pitchers. We got Jose Soriano. We can see what he has done. I mean, he had five hits, shut up, just gave up nothing in six innings against the Mets. And then he faced Seattle twice, did decent. Oakland got him a little bit, but then Chicago. So, yeah, I mean, pretty good numbers. Parker. Great game against Milwaukee for six innings. Rough game against San Diego. Rough game against Milwaukee. Rough game against the Mets. You can see he's been up and down. And yeah, I would give Soriano the advantage in this one. Clearly, I don't really have an advantage on the bat side because they're pretty equal, pretty good overall. Let's look at props. Let's dig a little deeper, shall we? There's no history of Parker versus um, the Angels. Angels versus lefties. Some people love them a lefty. Mr. Nito, Neto, however you want to say it. And dude's been killing it recently. Um, he's 400, 340, 333. But outside of that, some of these guys are just absolute. Put them on the curb, let them get picked up. It's garbage day because that's where they belong when it comes to lefties. Ooh. Props. I've already dug through these already. I don't really like any of these, but I'll show you just because I always do. I got you, baby bird. Don't worry. I will always show you. See? Unless I forget, like I almost forgot last game. <laughs> so <laughs> I almost forgot. Let's pop the Soriano. Uh, one guy, he's one for four, Ramirez, uh, against righties, Washington. I mean, none of these outside is 158. Nothing's really bad. Everything, we got 387, which is still not as good as the other way. That's crazy. So you can see, I mean, yeah, the offenses are pretty good. Props, outs, uh, strikeouts, hits. Earn runs and walks. Nothing's really standing out. So for me, this hold is nine. Ooh, I kind of like the nine, to be honest. It's over nine is just standing out. Both these teams are bat batting quite well. Mm, I think that's what I'm going to do. I can see Parker giving up some runs. I can see Soriano giving up some runs. And then we know the bullpen's got to come in. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the over of nine in this one. I'm not taking a nerfy because look at the offensive numbers. No shot. I don't care. I'm not taking a side because nothing really stands out for me. So from I'm going to take the over of nine. I'm not going to take. Oh, oh, see, see, it's Friday. The coffee's kicking the weekend here. I'm excited. I almost forgot about bases. <laughs> so there we go. Then we got a bunch of bases, the top four. Then we got Wood with an HR and we got Moniak with an HR. Yeah, I mean, maybe, probably, but I'm going to try to limit it today. I, I don't want to go too many bets. And there's some games later. I got some multiple bets in. I already know just looking at the game. So this ain't one of them. So I'm not going to take these. I'm just going to take this over of nine. Hope the bats continue to stay hot and move on to the next game. All right, next up, Baltimore and Tampa. Baltimore's a slight favorite on the road. Seven and a half is total. Looking at the bats, we see 58% nerfy based on what they've done this year. Five runs, a buck 84. That's 12th and 26 for Baltimore in the last three games. Tampa, 3.7 and 252. That's 12th. Up 22nd and 17th. Uh, Baltimore has advantage in runs. Tampa has advantage in batting average. So they kind of cancel out. And hey, Tampa's dropped down to 10th in strikeouts in the last three. They were 30th three days ago. So they have figured it out. So hey, good job. So the fun thing is going to be, well, one, they're in a dome. Tampa, Tropicana, no, no worry about weather there. Except it just might be humid because it's, it's humid here in Tampa. That's where I'm at. So... Um, Fun one is Eflin's pitching against Tampa. That's just fun because he literally was there not even three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Yeah, before he got traded. So he knows all the batters. But yeah, how is he going to do? Is he going to know and do great? Or is he going to be, you know, that's weird. It's a weird situation. You're going back to your ex. Everybody knows that's weird when it happens. So we've all been there, I'm sure. So, um, but he's been, he gave 10 and 3, 5 and 2, good numbers. And then Zach, Zachy boy here, we see what he's done. He's been pretty good the last two games. Got roughed up against the Yankees. It got roughed up against Texas. So we see those. Let's look at props. Uh, we'll start with him since we're talking about him. Boop, boop. History. We got a lot of history. Um, 429 for McCann. Adley's 364. Jimenez is 4 for 5. Gunner's 500. Uh, two, two home runs, two over gold at 1.7. That top of the poof. Holly's never faced him, but he probably should be in here um, because he's been on fire. 
Ooh, Mount Castle's over five. That's interesting. Okay, you see some numbers there. Santander's only betting 222, so mm, there you go. Against Rides, Baltimore is mostly outside of him, outside of Jackson, who, I mean, are we really going to consider his full season based on what he's done the past week? Let's see, that's why we look at this stuff like this. Yeah, this is his whole season, but I put more emphasis on what have you done lately. What have you done for me lately, Eddie? Things like that. So it's that's what matters to me. So yeah, um, those aren't those aren't bad stats. They're just not as important as what have you done lately. So let's look closer. Hits, strikeouts, ooh, four and a half against Baltimore. They're not striking out. They never strike out that much. But they're not like top five. They're like top ten. Mm, Earn runs very up and down. And outs. Yeah, I don't like the, the dips in there, so you're out. Let's go to F1, do history. Um, there you go. There is some history. Uh, Carlson's 300, two for three. Outside, not much, but he always pitched for them. It's going to be hard to find stats against your team. So Tampa versus Rowdy's, the numbers are nearly not as good as uh, Baltimore's was. We got 200s, but then we got 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100 0, 100. Yeah, it's, it's not as good. So we look at the hits. We've got some dips and valleys. I don't like the valleys. We've got some sandwich staircases. You're with five and a half strikeouts. Tampa's doing better on strikeouts now, so I don't want to take it. If they were still like 25th, yeah, I'd probably take it, but not with a 10th. Earned runs, he either gives up five or nothing. He's very, very up and down, very unreliable. I need consistency. This is consistent. I bet this game right here. <laughs> That was the last walk prop I took was this prop right there. Oh, I love betting sometimes. So, uh, and outs. Very, yes, see, mm, they know where to put these lines. They just know. So, yeah, I don't like any of this. Let's go to the bats. Do any bats stand out? Well, Hauser, 80%. Jackson, 80%. Santander, 70%. I, you know what? I'm not feeling any of the props in this game. This is a weird one because you have a former, your, your ex, just, you're going up against your ex. That's weird. I don't know. Weird things happen. Now, if it's been like a couple months, maybe, but it's been like two weeks. Give us some time to get over it, grieve a little bit. No, we moved on. So I don't like any of the props here. I don't like a side because of the matchup stuff. I don't like this. I don't like the nerfy. I don't like team totals. I'm just going to pass completely and move on to the next game. All right. We got a weird one. We got Texas and New York. New York's 180. Over under is nine. Looking at the bats, we see 38% nerfy based on what they've done this year. 3.3 and a buck 58. That's 25th and 30th for Texas when it comes to runs and batting average. 30th is the worst you can be in baseball in the last three games. Yankees, 3.7 and 255. That's 22nd and 15th. So they have a slight advantage, even though they're not that, they're all below mid themselves. So looking over at the weather reports yes we can there we go it's going to be storming up in new york you can see 21 mile an hour winds that's a lot of wind i don't care but it's blowing to the left so that might make a difference in a couple different at bats let's look at the pitchers rodon's going out there and you can see what he's done recently he's been basically average you can't complain good numbers he's been striking out more recently too he's hit seven most in basically all but one game that's pretty impressive and he's going up against a guy named cody bradford who has just been giving he only pitched twice two innings five runs three innings three runs i mean he's trying to get better slightly if you buy two games but mm -mm, no, i'm not liking those uh, you got got to clearly give road on the advantage i'm sure so that gives me two different advantages let's go to props i only have road on props that's mm, not good Matchup history, we don't have much. Simeon's two for 10, Kelly's 0 for 9, Grossman's three for 12. Those aren't good numbers against lefties. Uh, we had a couple 300, 323 to 295 outside of that. A lot of twos, a couple ones. Texas is average, maybe below average a little bit against lefties. So we can see earned runs two and a half. He had a stint where he was terrible, but he has settled in. He is striking out all but one recently, and Texas is currently sitting at 21st at nine strikeouts. I think Rodon's striking about, can he get seven strikeouts? That seems like a high number, but I think I might take it. Ooh, especially since they're batting 30th right now. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to put that Rodon over 6.5 Ks. What's his hits? Four and a half? What? That's it. That's so, so low. 
Oh, and his earned runs is two and a half. You know what? I think this is going to sound crazy. I think I'm going under 2.5 earned runs for Rodon. I'm just, to, yeah, strikeouts is cool. Six and a half is the number. Seven's a lot. I think he doesn't, like, this was Toronto. They're not batting 30th in average like Texas is and 25th in runs. I mean, I'm going to take the I'm gonna take the number while it's there. So I'm going to take Rodon under two and a half earned runs. I mean, it's got a little bit of juice on it. Yeah, but hey, I'll take it. Why not? Let's look over at the bats because that's all we can do, really. Uh, we got Wells. We got Jazz. These are all top four bases. And you got some HR guys. You got Wells, Chisholm. He got hurt. I don't know how. I haven't seen an update on how he's doing in Verdugo. So you can see how they've done it. I'm going to pass on all those. So for me, I'm going to trust the Yankees at home against this. I'm going to put them in I'm the money line parlor. I'm feeling it. Uh, mainly because I think Rodon's going to shut Texas down. This is all it is. So they're going to go to the mainline parlay. I'm going to add Rodon under two and a half earned runs and move to the next game. All right, Oakland, Toronto. Toronto, slight favorite at home, eight and a half. Uh, they're in a dome, no weather, obviously. Uh, you can see three runs for 27, the buck 86 for 25th for Oakland. Oakland's settling back into Oakland things. Toronto, five runs for 12, 265 for 10th. And top of the middle, that's about where they usually are. So we're, we're expecting what we're going to get here, so... And we can pop over to, just to show you, Dome. And now we pop over here to Mitch Spence is your pitcher in this one. You can see what he has done. And it has been mostly decent, good decent, three games in a row. Got roughed up by Philly. Uh, he's decent against the Angels. He faced him three times in a month. Uh, Baltimore got to him, Philly got to him. Dodgers he did decent against, but you can see. Uh, Cheerios, Barrios, whatever you want to call him. You can see what he's going out here now. He has been giving up runs like crazy outside of the Texas game, who we know Texas cannot hit the ball right now. So, yeah. So, there you go. Let's look at the props. First thing I see is Barrios. I see a lot of green bars, but we're going to go history first. So, we got some history. S. Brown, 357, four bats. That's worth noting, I would say. It's not going to stand out completely. I need, I need like a 400 average over a lot of bats, something that really stands out. But that's no, that's notable. And Oakland versus righties. We got some hundreds, we got some two hundreds, we got a 294, 292 for Rooker, because Rooker is just awesome. And there you go. Earn runs two and a half, gone over in eight out of ten games, facing Toronto, who is doing oh, this is very sorry. Facing Oakland, who is not doing well on offense. You can see 27th and 25th. That's not great. So I don't want to take that over under you crazy. Strikeouts, mm, I don't trust. No, new, no, new. No. Mm -mm. No, mm -mm. ugly. Ugh. Oh, Ugh. <laughs> all right. Now let's pop over to Mitch. We'll see what Mitch is up to. Mitch's history: a lot of one. For, this is one game. All one for threes and an O for two. Nothing stands out. Toronto versus righties. Oh, uh, we got a three hundred for for Vladdy, but outside of that, he ain't got no help. So it's going to be all Vladdy or average. Outs, strikeouts. How's Oakland strikeouts doing? Oakland's top five in strikeouts? What? That's wild for a three-game stretch. Usually they're with, they're with Seattle, just chilling in the bottom. Okay, Oakland, I see you. Yeah, none of these props look good at all. I don't like any of these. Let's go to bats. Ugh. Ooh, there's Rooker, 70% HR. There's Vladdy, bases, and Kirk, HR. I don't like those. Ooh, we got decent... Mm. 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 I don't know. I don't think. I, mm. I don't know. This game's just. <laughs> I mean, Barrios might give up some runs, but he's facing Oakland, who might not give up the, get the runs to give up. And then Spence is going out there. Spence gives up some runs sometimes, but then we don't know because it's not the Angels he's facing. It's. Um, am I taking the Nerfy? No. Mm -mm. Oak, uh, Oakland. Toronto's offense is good enough to where they can score, and too many runs can be given up by Barrios where Oakland could easily get a run very easily and Nervies have been very hard to hit lately like the first eight games yesterday all hit I don't know what the last two um for the Yurfies not a Nervies were 0 and 8 it was wild so I went to sleep after that I don't know um yeah I think to me I think I'm just gonna pass completely on this one and just move on to the next game all right next up we got Houston and Boston Boston's a slight favorite over under 10 because Boston's apparently the new course field every total is going to be over 10 it looks like looking at the bats we see 47% nerfing based on what they've done this year 4.3 with a 262 that's Houston 16th and 12th in the last three pretty average 
Boston 6.3 and 284, that's seventh and eighth uh, for them the last three. So advantage goes to Boston slightly in this one. Looking at the weather, we can see we come down. It is going to be storming and the wind, oh, the wind's going to be blowing out. Pointing right at the big wall. There you go, 16 miles an hour. That should be a fun one there. You got some rain. Ugh, I don't like the rain in the area. That's not good. So let's pop over to pictures. We got Blanco going out there. Oh, you can see. Yeah, he gives up. He, he's going to give up two, at least two. That's just what he does. Uh, hasn't faced Boston recently. Tanner Hawks going out there. You can see what he's done. It has not, his last game was not pretty. This was Texas. Texas is not good. We saw offensively. So, oh, uh, not, no. Mm -mm. I mean, he was good back here, but six. Oof. Oh, it's good props. Let's look at some history. Let's see what we got. Anything stands out. We want to go Blanco first. Nothing. Okay. Uh, and then we got information here. We got some 300. This is against righties. Boston is one, two, three, four. Four guys with 300s. And we got some high twos. Yeah, Boston might have a field day out here. Just looking at all we have is a strikeout prop. That's it for Blanco. Five and a half. And he's gone under multiple times. That's a pass from me. Uh, same with Tanner. Oh, okay. Nice little valley. We'll pass on that one. But we'll look at the history. And... There we go. Um, looks like one game. Really, nothing really stands out. Against righties, Houston is on a lot of red. There's one under one. There's a 300 for Diaz. Nothing's really... Basically, Diaz and Altuve, but the only two that stand out. Man, maybe. So, you can see. Mm, not good. Let's go to bats. Can I get some bats in this one? This is a weird one. Mm, Devers... Wong, Smith. Uh, Boston's offense is doing that. Houston, they're not as bad as they've been. They, they're they're trending up nicely. Ooh. Hmm. You know, I don't, I don't know if I like this. I'm looking at these and it's just, okay, what has Deavers done? Can I go back and look at the history. There is no history with them, but we can look. How Devers does versus righties. Devers, where you at? Right here. 335 against righties. Okay, I might ask some Devers. And then who else we want? We need to look at. I don't like bases. Wong and Smith. Wong is 289 and Smith is 235. So we're not doing Smith. I'll do Devers. We'll put Devers in there. So let's go up here. Devers, HRR. I've done it a couple times and it's paid off nicely. I think I'm like two and one using him so far. Beavers over 1.5 HR. There we go. We'll add that. Um, am I going to take the nerfy? No. Am I going to take a side uh, with Tanner Hawk pitching? No. He gives up too many runs. I can't do that. So no, I'm not taking a side. Do I want to take a total? The total is what? 10? 10. Ooh. That seems high. But yeah. No, we'll pass on it. We'll pass on it. So that's just too high. Oh, this is a course field. I don't know. Um, the wind going out is a thing, though. That wind. I'm going to trust you wind people. I'm going to trust you for once. I know there's scissor in the area. It's a 40%. That's low. 16 out over the green monster. That's, you know what? I'm going to ride with the wind people. We're going over 10. Let's do it. I'm not going to take anything else. Let's go to the next game. All right, next up, we got San Diego and Miami. Uh, San Diego slight favorite, eight and a half is your number. They're in a dome, so there's no weather to look at. 52% uh, nerfy based on what they've done this year. A lot of San Diego logos on the screen. 7.3 for second, while 307 for third. That's San Diego in the last three. They've also won five games in a row. Miami, four runs a game for 19, 216 for 24. Clear advantage San Diego in this one. Looking at the pitches, we got Cabrera going out there from Miami. You can see what he's done. He's, I mean... Nothing against Atlanta, but we know Atlanta's offense isn't good right now. So three and two, three and three, five, one, six, seven. He since he got him a little bit, um, but outside of that, not bad numbers. Uh, we can see Perez. Mm, his first game away from Pitt was Colorado. He, pit, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. The P on the hat and the yellow threw me off. Yeah, he's with Padres. He's still wearing his Pittsburgh colors because ESPN won't update pitchers for nothing. So you can see he was great there. These two games were not great. So he's, he's up and down. So let's go over here. Pop. Let's look at some matchup histories. We have a little, but not enough to really care about. 
uh, against Roddy, San Diego does pretty decently. Even the red ones are still good. Every number on this screen is good. I mean, lot many 300s, a lot of high 200s. So that's good for San Diego. They might have them a field day. So <laughs> I might have to put them on the money line for sure. Uh, let's look at the four and a half strikeouts. We get San Diego, no shot. Uh, hits. Mm. Mm, I, I lean that one a little bit. Earn runs. I mean, he's been decent, but that was Atlanta. Yeah, new. Let's go to Perez. See if anything stands out with him. Just to make sure. Swap it up. Uh, we got some information. Burgers four for ten with a home run. Uh, three for four. The burger might stand out a little bit. Miami against lefties is a lot of red on the screen. Bad, bad, average, bad, bad, great, bad, bad. I say 200 is bad. Um, I'll say average, good, bad, bad, bad. That ain't good. <laughs> so strikeouts, three and a half. What is Miami strikeout numbers? They're almost last. Is Perez just not a strikeout guy? Let's let's pop back over here and look at something. Hold on. Let's look at his history. What has he done? Two, four, five, two, seven. I mean, I could have done that right here too, but still. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to pass on the strikeouts. Hits, earn runs, walks, outs. He's hit six the last couple times, so. Mm. Okay. I know what I'm doing in this one. I'm going to put San Diego in the money line parlay. That is a fact. That is a factual statement. San Diego will join that for sure. Um, on top of that, I think I am also going to take Cabrera over 4.5 hits allowed. I think San Diego is going to be able to get, get, get some off him. If he pitches a gym, San Diego loses. It's pretty simple. This is a correlation bet. They're going to tie together the parlay piece for San Diego and Cabrera giving up hits. I mean, they're going to go 2-0 or 0-2 in this game. So that's what we're going to do in this one. I'm not going to take a nerf because San Diego's offense. I'm not taking the total of 8.5 because of Miami's offense. So just those two pieces. Uh, San Diego, money line Cabrera, over 4.5 hits allowed. And move on to the next game. Did it again. Completely forgot to show the batch for this game. I might have forgotten another game too, but ah, it's okay. Uh, you can see here it's going to be a lot of 80s up here. Our, we got Machado, 90%. You got these. I didn't think about this because I already got two plays from the props from the pitcher and the money line. So I'm not going to take any of these, but I still want to show you so you can see if you want to take them. So you can see what you got here. Xavier, Bogarts, Merrill, Machado, Bride. You can see what they've done. So there you go. Take a look at those. Now let's go to the next game. All right. Next up, we got Chicago versus Chicago. It's always fun. Uh, Chicago's favored. Not the Cubs are favored. Eight is your total. Uh, let's look at the weather first do that uh we come down where did you there they are way down here okay so you can see winds going straight out 12 miles an hour gonna be a nice day so let's look back at the numbers we see 62.62 percent .62 nerfy based on what they've done um white Sox fire their manager that's gonna matter in this one i think because of who's pitching so five runs a game 240 that's 12th and 21st for chicago 2.7 and a buck 84 that's 28th and 26 cubs have the advantage in this one and this is why I think it matters because Crochet is pitching. And I think this was a manager decision to not let him pitch too many innings because you just see what he has done. They're trying to limit him. I wonder if the interim is going to limit him as much. I don't think they will. I just don't think they will. Um, especially not four innings because this is just ridiculous. Your best pitcher. I, I don't. Yeah, he's pitched so he struck out 162. I don't care. I don't care. What is, you can see what he's done. He's been good. Italian's going out there for Chicago. He's obviously pretty good. Outside the Cincinnati game, he's been pretty much three or under every game. Good numbers overall. And we pop up to the props. Let's go to Crochet first. And we can look at the matchup. See if we got a history on him. No real stats there. Cubs against lefties, though. Cubs do hit lefties pretty well. These are, these are high numbers, except for him. And him, but everybody else is pretty high. So, okay, maybe Crochet won't pitch that long because he might get pulled. <laughs> so, oh, okay, strikeouts is five and a half for Crochet. You can see he's going down. Cubs are 8.3. Cubs are always in top middle when it comes to strikeouts. They don't strike out too often. Um, 
Yeah, this is a little, this is this is annoying. This is annoying. But I feel like he's gonna pitch more of warnings. I just do. But we don't we don't bet on feelings, rather right? we bet we bet based on stats and what we see. And we see statistically he has gone down. We know the manager was limiting, so I need to sit back and watch one game from him. I need to see if do they let him go six innings. If he goes six innings, I think he I think he even even though last time he still pitched four innings only struck out two. That's a little concerning as well. Hmm. Anyways, and let's go to Italian and see what he does. He actually has a full list of props. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Ooh, shoot. Chicago guys have green. White Sox green? I mean, it's only one game or it's a couple games, it looks like, but still. Um, I mean, they're better against righties. We don't have any good numbers on this list. Literally, the highest is 238, it looks like. That ain't good. So, um, 17 and a half. Is he going to go six innings? Probably so. But 210, oof. Strikeouts, no. Earn runs, two and a half. Hits, five and a half. I mean, mm, no. Oof. What was the, what was the um, Chicago by that much? That's it. This doesn't feel like a Chicago White Sox game. Yeah, so I think I'm going to put the Cubs in the money line parlay. We're going to do that one for sure. MLP. Um... Yeah, outside of that, I don't like the pitcher props. Let's go to bats. Andy bats look good. Ben Attendee's doing good. Then we got some bases. And we got Andrew Vaughn, uh, Crow Armstrong, and Ben Attendee again. If you want to take those, enjoy yourself. I'm not liking those at all, really, either. Um, based on this, I'm taking Chicago. What's the total? Eight. What was the weather? Out. I know this is Wrigley. It's, Chicago. it's the White Sox. But... You know what? I love anytime I see over eight, I love over eight. Just it's a fun one. So I'm taking over of eight. I'm taking Chicago Cubs on the money line and move on to the next game. All right, next up we got St. Louis and Kansas City. And uh, KC is a slightest of favorite. It's basically a pick 'em. Nine is your total. Looking at let's do the weather first. Uh, this is St. Louis and KC. There you go. Five miles an hour. And it's a nice day, so nothing stands out there. Come over here. 48% nerd fee based on what they've done this year. Uh, 4.3 with 265. That's St. Louis with 16th and 10th in the last three. Six runs, 238. That's 9th and 22nd for Casey. So Casey has the runs. St. Louis has the average. It's one of those weird ones that doesn't make too much sense. So let's pop over the pitchers. We got Amigulis going out there. And you see what he's done. Hasn't faced Casey recently. Had a, had a gem. Got roughed up by the Cubs twice now. So he does not like the Cubs. <laughs> so you can see what else he's done. Face Washington a couple times. There you go. Uh, Lorenz is going out there for KC. First game away from Texas was a pretty good game. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's been a couple games. Angels roughed him up. Toronto kind of roughed him up. So, yeah, we got, they're about average. I wouldn't take a side of either one. They're both good. They're both goodish. So let's go to props. We start with Lorenz in history versus Cardinals. Uh, Goldie is two for 10. Ooh, Carpenter, not good. Yeah, these aren't good numbers. Against righties, I mean, we got a 298, a 305, 279, but we got some, I mean, just they're about average overall. Crawford's below. That's not good. And Scott's not good. And hits is four and a half. Against St. Louis, mm -mm. earn runs. Walks, outs. I, oof, ew, I don't like any of those. All right, so let's go make this history. Okay, Frazier has a lot of bats. 382 on 34 bats. That stands out as you want to hit somebody get a hit parlay. Let's see, Frazier. Is Frazier on this list real quick? He is not. Okay, so we come back. Perez. Uh, no one else is really standing. Run for is only 235. That's not good. So you can see those numbers. Righties. We got some 200s. We got a 350 for Bobby Witt because Bobby Witt's just doing Bobby Witt things. And Pascotino's 275. Strikeouts is two and a half. Oof, that is. Mm, Casey doesn't strike out though. Mm, I can't. Mm -mm. I mean, that's this. What? What? Yeah. Watch him not hit it either. Watch him end with two strikeouts the whole game. Just watch. You already know it's coming. And he's starting to trend down in his outs. That's interesting too. So that's a downward trend. Okay, let's go over here again. Like again, Pasquatino, 90% HR going up against. Uh, we, we did point him out. How was his history against KC? 
Uh, pass with Tino is one for three. Okay, I don't like that. Um, bases, 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 and Mason win. How's Mason win? I didn't look at Mason win. Win has never faced him. Okay, how's he doing his righties? He's 298 with two. That might be a move. That could be. Mason win. Mm, okay. I don't, you know, I, that's not the only thing I see. I don't feel great about it. I don't know who to pick inside. Don't know. I'm not taking nine. That's too, that's, that doesn't feel right. This, this is just mid. I'm not taking a nerfy. I don't like anything in this one, really. So for me, I'm just going to pass completely and move on to the next game. All right, we have Cincinnati, Milwaukee. Over. I'm kidding. Maybe I'm not. We'll see. <laughs> so you can see Milwaukee's a slight favorite. Eight and a half your total. 52% uh, nerfy based on what they've done. And you can see one versus two in runs. 7.3 and 11.3. Now, Milwaukee did get the benefit of facing Atlanta. And they got 16 runs yesterday. And that does influence that number. It affects it, obviously. But hey, runs are runs yesterday uh with the past three 400 average as a team milwaukee is batting 400 in the last three games combined for first cincinnati 288 for six so yeah milwaukee has the advantage but since he's not bad either they're they're second and six so yeah over is 100 percent in play and it's eight and a half yeah we'll look at the pitchers but i'm pretty sure we're taking it strikeouts milwaukee is striking at more than usual but when you're swinging that much you're gonna miss occasionally so Okay, let's go. Uh, do we have weather at all? I'm not familiar. Nope, it is a dome. That's right. It's Milwaukee. Yep. Uh, let's look at pitchers. Carson Spires, welcome. You get to face Milwaukee's bats. And we see what you have done. You have not faced Milwaukee. You got, you, you've done decently. You've done decently. And who was the volley, surveil, however you want to call it. I don't care. He got roughed up a little bit a couple times. Washington. Hmm, I can see both pitchers giving up a, at least three runs a piece easy. So, ooh, let's go to the props. Um, let's see. Go. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's see if anything stands out first before we just jump all over that over. Because I think I'm going to. But history wise, it, France has a 308 history. That's not. That's good. France got traded. He got basically designated, then traded, then released or whatever. He's not good, but this is good. France might be a play. Is he in the props? Let's look. Is France up here? No. Okay. All right. Since he versus righties. See, this is what I'm talking about. You see since he's on fire, but the numbers for the season say they're not that good, but we know they're good right now because the numbers recently show they're good. So this is why you got to take season stats with a grain of salt versus recent stats. Everything matters. So, um, Okay. So we see what they've done. Hits, four and a half. Uh, I can see that happening. Strikeouts, two staircases. No, I don't like that. Earned runs, walks, and outs. Definitely not consistent. Hit over five, four and a half hits against Cincy. That could, with him? Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, like over 4.5 hits allowed. I am one, I'm putting that in there. Got to do it. Um, he's gone over so many times this year. It's only four and a half. Yeah, we're adding that one. Let's come over here and look at Spliers. Bang, bang, boom. A lot of green on the board. It's only been a game, not many at bats. A lot of green for Milwaukee. You can see all the information, nothing stands out. Look at the props. Your hits is five and a half. You're facing Milwaukee. I don't know if I want to do your hits. What's your earn runs? Hmm. You are decent. You don't give up too much. Well, maybe you do. That was Chicago. That was San Fran. You're a righty. San Fran loves lefties, so you still give up five to the right. The team that loves lefties more. You knew. I think for Spires, I'm going to take the... Mm, no, I think I'm going to do hits on both. You know what? Over 5.5. I'm going to take hits on both. I think the offense is stay hot. Nothing else is standing. That's pretty consistent, but I don't like, we'll, we'll stay away from that. Let's go to hits to the bats. See what it stands out. Oh, Hoskins bases. Cheerio, 90% for charge. How, how do you say his name? I'm calling Cheerio. I don't care. Jackson C. There you go. 1.5 HRR. Hoskins, 1.5. How are they doing? You get to face Spires. Oh, flip this over. Uh, we want... 
where are you at? There you are. 279, 13 home runs, 796. And Hoskins, 230. 230 is not good. Ooh, I figured that'd be close to 300 instead of 279. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, I have my plays. I'm taking three plays in this game. I sh probably shouldn't, but I'm doing it. I'm going to take the over eight and a half, like I said I was. Yeah, over eight and a half all day. Um, and I'm going to take both pitchers that give up hits. I'm taking Savale over four and a half hits, Spires over five and a half hits next game. All right, next up is the doubleheader part two between Cleveland and Minnesota. I don't have props for it. It's the second game of doubleheader. I don't like doubleheaders anyways. So we can see it's basically a pick them eight and a half. I'll show you what I can though. Uh, you can see the numbers from earlier that haven't changed. Minnesota's still struggling offensively. Cleveland's pretty mid. They still lost five in a row. And I'll show you the pitchers. Uh, again, it's in a dome. It's Minnesota. No, no, Minnesota's not a dome. What am I thinking? I'm thinking old Minnesota. Uh, at this time frame, where is it? Scroll back up. There they are. Uh, it's supposed to be out at 10. Nice game at 810. Should be nice. For pitchers, we got Alex Cobb going out there. Cobb has not pitched since 2023, so that should be a fun one. See how he does in his first game. Um, welcome back. And Louis Varlin's going out there for Minnesota. Uh, he hasn't pitched since June, and, you know, this should be a fun one. So this is just, I mean, no, no shot on betting this. I have no props to look at. We have a pitcher coming from the minors. We have a dude who's been hurt first game of the season. I mean, yeah, if you're betting this one, by all means, have fun. I am completely passing and just moving on to the next game. Next up, we got Braves and Rockies. Braves are a slight favorite on the road. One th oh, moderate favorite. Ten and a half is your total. What is this, Boston? No, just kidding. 55% um, in our based on what they've done this year. Numbers, four runs a game for 255 average. It's 19th and 15th for Atlanta, Colorado. 3.3, 242. That's 25th and 19th. Atlanta is on a five-game losing streak. Also worth noting. And strikeouts, Atlanta is last. They're swinging and missing at everything, 12.3. Colorado's only 16th for once. They're usually bottom five, but they're doing a little bit better at 8.7. So looking at, let's do the weather first. Um, go down. There it is. It's going to be blowing in at five. And we got a whole variety of weather in this game. So pick your poison. It, can, it might start out raining. We might be in delay before it even starts. So pitchers, we got Grant Holmes going out there. It is a reliever game bullpen game if you will for the braves they're gonna let him pitch a handful of innings and he's decent he gives up a couple runs and tanner gore threw a, he was throwing a, like a no hitter for like the first innings it looked like one hit over six dude was a beast against san diego of all teams san diego i thought they were gonna light him up nope he had a different idea that day before that he got lit up let's be honest so let's look at the props if we can look at anything uh, we go Grant Holmes. He is a reliever, but we got history stuff. We can always look at that history. Yeah. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> we can always look at nothing. There you go. So you can see the stats, the information. Uh, oh, I got some 200s. We got a 160. That ain't good. Nobody's at 300. And if you want to look at some props on a guy that might pitch one inning or might pitch four innings, here you go. Hits strikeouts and earn runs and walks enjoy yourself because i ain't doing it and we come over here to tanner who doesn't have much stats anyways because uh oh solaire was two for three went back in his san fran days this year before he got traded uh, against righties you can see how they do not good not good not good not good not good not good Ooh, you see this one time the braves just are struggling so now do i think they'll probably win the series yeah probably because Colorado's just not that good either. So <laughs> this is a terrible game overall. Oh, five and a half strike hits allowed. Yeah, not against the Braves offense. Now strikeouts, three and a half. They're facing Atlanta, who's dead last. We know he's going to pitch at least six innings, most likely. I am taking this 100%. Gordon over 3.5 Ks. Got to do that one. Got to do it. Got to see it through, my boy. Got to see it through um earn runs and yeah mm -mm. yeah i'm gonna take him to strike out four braves for a war shore let's look at some bats no we're not we're gonna look at three we're gonna look at k for bases austin riley two and a half hrr is pick em, and tovar one and a half hr no shot i'm taking two and a half unless your name's aaron judge i'm not doing it no shots so okay am i taking a side in this one no atlanta slightly favored but i I 
I mean, it's a bullpen game. What are you going to do? Um, so no shot. I'm not taking a nerfy because it's, I mean, you saw the numbers. I can't do it. Only thing I'm going to take in this one, I'm going to take those Gordon three and a half strikeouts and just bounce to the next game. All right, next up, Philly and Arizona. Philly's a slight favorite, eight and a half. Oop, 35% nerfy based on what they've done this year. Philly's on a three game winning streak. Uh, you could see seven runs a game, 333. That's fourth and second for Philly in the last three. Philly's on fire after being basically nothing for like a few weeks. So now they've, they've they woke up arizona 5.3 257 it's 11 14th arizona is mid but yeah not, that's good but you want not bad they were hotter but they, they cooled out they cooled off to mid hey so let's look at the first off i can see the weather it's in a dome so we don't have to worry about that we go to pitchers nelson is going out there for arizona you can see what he has done good numbers overall i mean can't complain four is his worst and it's done it twice. Eh, not, I mean, we've seen way worse. And Wheeler is going out there for Philly. Philly, there's a worse right there. Triple sevens right there. Bingo. And before that, great games overall. So, yeah, I would. They're both good pitchers. I'd probably still take Wheeler slightly over Nelson. Yeah, I think so. I mean, they're both good. I mean, it's really hard to sell. So, let's look at the props, see if we can dig a little deeper. Outlier low. There you go. Let's go Nelson first, since he pulled up first. History, Scott's got a home run, six at bats. No one's got more, no one's got double digits. I want double digits at bats, but I can't find them. Against righties, a lot of red. Boom, Turner. Yeah, I mean, they're hot, but see, the, uh, the, for the seed, they're, they're above their averages. Let's go to the props. Outs is very up and down. Strikeouts is very up and down it's a very up and down let me guess very up and down there it is okay yep so yeah very nelson is mr very up and down he ryan elevator nelson was i shall call him wheeler wheeler let's see what he does boop boop and history a lot of red on the history we got some good at bats mm. bell's 313 with four home runs and not our eyes all right bell let's pop over to props what the hell is this Team injuries may impact playing time. That's new. Did Josh Bell get hurt? I just didn't see the update on it. Okay. I mean, bases. We got a lot of numbers. Suarez and Perdomo. See what they look like. Suarez, Perdomo's a one, one, one for nine, no shot. Suarez is about the same, so those two will not be on the thing. Um, Peterson, Carroll, and Marte. How are they doing against history against Wheeler Carroll is 0 for 8 okay Marte has Marte is okay Marte 3 308 13 at bats one home run yeah Marte can go on the list Marte over 1.5 HRR I'll add him to the list so on top of that we'll leave the rest alone let's go with the props mm. strikeouts yeah how is Arizona striking out 8.7 including 11 yesterday Ooh, head to head oh he he likes facing arizona does he not okay your number is five and a half okay i think i'm taking some wheeler so i basically i think wheeler's gonna strike out everybody not named Marte today so, so we'll take that we'll take those two right there that's all i'm gonna take probably but we'll just keep looking and see if a third one pops up just in case nope 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 we've already been to the bats we saw that i'm not messing with bell especially if he's been injured on top of that mm, we'll see over under eight and a half Ooh, I, these two pitchers are really good though they might not get there I think I'll leave those alone. I'm going to take Marte over one and a half HR, and I'm going to take Wheeler over five and a half strikeouts next game. All right, next up, we got Pitt in LA. LA is minus 200. Eight is your total. 44% nerfy. 4.7, 252. That's 15th to 17th for Pittsburgh in the last three. Dodgers, 3.7, 242, 22nd, 19th. Slightest of advantage for Pitt. They're on a four game losing streak. Dodgers on a two game losing streak. Someone's got to win today. So. Pittsburgh, 11.7 strikeouts. That's second to last. We all Dodgers are first at five. So let's look a little closer. Uh, this is the Dodgers. We got some, it'll be literally no win and a nice day. It's going to be a nice night at the ballpark. So pitchers, Keller's going out there facing the Doyers. Hasn't faced them recently. Uh, been pretty decent. Only pitched four innings here, but still good numbers. 
Um, Flaherty going out there for the Dodgers. Before that was with Detroit. Five hits, nothing in six. That's why they got him. But it was Oakland. We know how Oakland's doing recently. And you can see he's been pretty good since then. So oh, look at the props. Let's go a little deeper. Keller. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, we got some history. Hayward's 278. Freeman's 500. Otani's only 200. That's what? That's not one for five. That's not good. You can see all the numbers there. Against varieties. Uh, your two greens are always going to be Freeman and Otani. Rosario's getting close to 300. Yeah, okay. Hits, strikeouts, both for down, downward staircases. I don't like those. Ugh. Outs. Ugh. Terrible. Nasty. I don't like any of those. All right, let's go over here to Flaherty. Steal the draft. Steal the trade thing, I think. How do they let the Dodgers get Flaherty? I just don't understand. But hey, whatever. Hey, that's cool. Uh, Flaherty, good numbers. A lot of green, but it's not many at-bats except for him. Not good. <laughs> so, and Reynolds, not good. If you have more than 10, you're not going to be good, apparently. Uh, nothing is really, no 300s to 292, but outside of that, 288, 285, nothing too good. Strikeouts, hits, earned runs all over the place, all over the place, up and down. That's consistent, but 17 and a half, you're literally, it's a 50 50 shot. It's a, it's a coin flip. Ugh. Let's look at the bats. There are a lot of bat props to look at because that was a lot of green in the last 10. They hear Lux. Bart, 90% HRR. A lot of bases. Lux again. HR. So you got Lux, Bart, De La Cruz, and Hayes and Tellez. I want to look at Lux real quick. Has Lux ever faced Flaherty? I mean, uh, not Flaherty. Um, Lux, Lux, Lux. There you are. Lux against Keller. He is one for three. Eh, okay. And I also want to look at Bart. Has Bart ever faced Flaherty? No, he is not. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. That's a lot. That's a lot of bats. That makes me want to look at the over again. It's eight. Ooh, I do like me some over unders of eight. Both pitchers have been really good. Uh. Uh. You know what? I'm gonna. Do it. I'm going over at eight in this one. I'm betting based on the fact that so many guys are doing good at getting on base here recently in the last 10. The pitchers might have a rough day. That's my, that's my, I'm going to, I'm going to test this theory out with this one right here. So that's what we're going to do over of eight, move on to the next game. All right. Next up, we've got Mets and Mariners. We can see it's basically a pick them with a total of eight. Uh, we can see the bats 57% nerfing based on what they've done this year. 5.7, 300 for the Mets. That's 10th and fourth in the last three. Seattle, 2.7. Buck 76, that's 28th and 29th. Big advantage for the Mets in this one. And you can see the strikeouts. There goes Seattle, back where they belong, bottom five. Looking over at, I guess we could check this first. It's in a dome, it's Seattle, of course. And then we see Quintana's going out there for the Mets. I mean, he's been pretty good outside the game against Colorado randomly, but outside that, he's been pretty good. You can't complain with the way he's pitching. Um, yeah, and then Miller who is also pretty good. I really can't complain with the way he pitches either. These are good numbers. Four a couple times. Uh, let's look at the props. Let's dig a little deeper. Quintana, history versus the Mariners. We got a lot of zeros. Turner's 308 and 13 at bats with a point nine point nine. Uh, one for threes. Don't really care about those. Seattle versus lefties. Uh, I mean, they're summer. I mean, no one's really great. A lot of average and below average. Okay. That's it. Okay, let's look at some props. Strikeouts. That oh, is Seattle. Hold up now. Hold up now. It's Seattle. That's 10.7. And you, you have been striking a lot more recently. I like to see that. You're liking this. Okay. All right. I'm down for that. Let's go with, uh, yeah. Let's go Quintana over. Was that 4.5? 4.5 Ks. Let's go for that for sure. Hits, earn runs, walks, outs. I already got the Ks. I feel good about that. Miller, there's no history to speak of really against the Mets first righties. I mean, yeah, there's they're better against lefties overall, but I mean, they're not bad against righties. These numbers are good and they're on fire. 
Yeah, I'm liking the Mets as a money line play today. Just saying. Just liking the uh, hits four and a half. He's been giving us some hits, has he not? Hits might be the move. We'll come back. We'll come back. We'll keep looking. Yeah. Yeah. We're going Miller four and a half hits loud. And we'll go to bats. There's not many bats. Randy's a 70%. Bader and that's it. I don't like bases, so you got those two. Um, let's pop back over and see how Bader does against him. Boop. Bader is two for four, and that's it. Okay, neither one has really stats to look at. So for me, I'm going to put the Mets into the money line parlay. Uh, that matches with the Yankees, Padres, Cubs. I'm taking Quintana over four and a half strikeouts and Miller over and a half four and a half over four and a half hits allowed and move on to the next game. All right, last game will be easy because we've only got one pitcher listed. We got Detroit versus San Fran. San Fran's a heavy favorite, seven and a half. Bats, 48% Nerfy based on what they've done. 4.3 and 262, that's 16th and 22nd for Detroit. That mid, San Fran, seven runs and 276, that's fourth and ninth. Pretty good. Advantage San Fran and the bats. Looking over at uh, the weather first, it's in San Fran blowing out eight nice day overall shouldn't have complaints robbie ray is the only pitcher we know today for this game and he has only pitched three times and you can see been pretty good numbers overall can't complain go over to the props see if we have anything for him we, we're not going to have much for him honestly so we can have a little bit of stats three for ten with a home run two for three and eh, nothing really stands out so you can see the history this is detroit versus lefties I mean, some like it, but a lot absolutely hate facing lefties in this team. So, I mean, I was going to stop on the money line parlay, but I don't even know who the pitcher for Detroit is, but it's not going to be as good as Ray in this one, I'm pretty sure. So, I think that's going to be a San Fran money line play. That's what I'm thinking. Um, we have hits four and a half, six and a half strikeouts. Oh, uh, how is it? Ooh, hold up now. Six and a half. Yep, yep. I was going to skip this, but Ray over 6.5 Ks. Got to do that one. You're striking out 28th. Yeah, you're getting added. Sorry. Earn runs, walks, outs. And if you want to see bats, here you go. There's only two options. And it's one. It's Justin Henry. That's all you get today. So everyone else is there. So for me, yep. All right. I'm adding San Fran to the money line parlay. And I'm adding Ray over 6.5 strikeouts. And that's all I'm going to do because I don't know who the pitcher is. And we'll call it a day right there. All right, that's all 16 games broken down in baseball today. We didn't pass on too many. I only passed on four total games, I think. I got a lot of plays. Moneyland Parlay is five games deep. Both New York teams, San Diego Cubs and the Giants. Uh, I didn't really have any standout bats where you look at them and go, wow. I mean, there were some good ones, but nothing really stood out. So I'm not going to have any like that. So there's tons of hit parlay people and strikeouts. There's a lot of props today. There's a lot of totals today. I just have a lot of bets today. Make up for yesterday. We only have five. So it was a great breakdown. I love seeing it. If you watch the entire thing, I appreciate you being here. Drop a like, subscribe, share, check out Outlier, link in the description. You see how awesome it is. I use it every single day and it's been working great. All the information is there. Outside of that, if you, you know, if you're just looking to support, you can become a member. There's a discord. We talk about all the bets, all the stuff. It's fun. So outside of that, I appreciate you watching and hopefully we end up profitable and we will see you tomorrow. Peace.